It's a sea of red here in St. Louis, and Cardinal fans are hoping for a long playoff run. And we would like to welcome T-Mobile as a new MLB partner and presenting sponsor of TBS coverage of the Division Series. And welcome to Game 1 here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis in the National League Division Series between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the St. Louis Cardinals. And welcome, everyone, on a beautiful day in St. Louis. Dick Stockton along with Bob Brenly. Matt Weiner will be here as well. And these teams may play out of the same division, but they're as far apart as you can imagine. The Pirates have been strangers to postseason for 21 years, and the Cardinals, Bob, seem to be here every year. Well, if it's the first week of October, you make your reservations to come to St. Louis this year, no exception. You talk about the experience at this time of year. To put it in perspective, Yadier Molina has almost as many postseason games as the entire Pirates roster. Meanwhile, these teams played a tight season series, and the Pirates actually won the series season series 10 games to 9. Very even across the board. The one advantage for the Pirates you'll see is in the home runs, 19 during the regular season against only five for the Cardinals, but two ground ball pitching staffs. The home run may not even be a factor in this series. The one thing we know about the Pirates, if they're beating the Reds three straight and then in the wild card game, they are no fluke. Well, they're no fluke at all. And manager Clint Hurdle, because of those numbers we showed you just a moment ago, said they don't fear the Cardinals. They respect the Cardinals, but they don't fear them. Should be a great series. All right, and let's take a look at the pitching matchup for game one. For the Cardinals, it'll be their ace, Adam Wainwright who won 19 games in the regular season. And there you see what he's done in his postseason career. And for the Pirates, it'll be the veteran right-hander, A.J. Burnett. So the stage is set. Game one between these NL Central Division rivals coming up on TBS in just a moment. Moments away from the first pitch here in St. Louis and a comfortable day here 85 degrees partly cloudy we could get some more clouds and possibly a thunderstorm a little north of us right now let's take a look at our batting order brought to you by T-Mobile for the Pittsburgh Pirates 
Starling Marte will be in left field. Neil Walker will be at second base. Andrew McCutcheon hitting third in center field. And Justin Morneau will be at first base batting cleanup. Marlon Byrd will be in right field. Pedro Alvarez is the third baseman. Russell Martin behind the plate hitting seventh. Clint Barmas, the shortstop, batting eighth. And A.J. Burnett, the pitcher, batting ninth. Take a look at the St. Louis Cardinals defense. 70 few air, 75 errors, the fewest in the National League, tied with the Arizona Diamondbacks. This is how they're going to line them up. Matt Holliday in left. John Jay in center field. Carlos Beltran over in right. It'll be local product David Fries at third base. Daniel Descalso playing shortstop. Matt Carpenter, outstanding here at second base. Big Matt Adams over at first behind the plate with five gold gloves to his credit. Yadier Molina and on the mound, right-hander Adam Wainwright. And uh, Bob, let's just get to it right away. And this was a situation that affected last year's series between the Nats and the Cardinals. And that concerns the shadows. And right now they are over the mound. And uh, obviously the shadows are a big problem for the hitters, at least early on in this game. Yeah, the hitters were hoping for... Uh, cloudy afternoon maybe some overcast the pitchers were hoping for a bright sunny day to take full advantage of those shadows uh, as you can see in the background there the clouds the sun will be in and out all afternoon and if you're a hitter you just hope your at bat comes when the clouds are in front of the sun <laughs> well the cardinals take the field and the cardinals with a 97 and 65 record and that was their best mark since 2005 they had a brilliant finish to this year. And Adam Wainwright, the towering 32-year-old right-hander, 6'7", native of Brunswick, Georgia, 19-9 this year with a 2.94 earned run average. This is the second time he has started the first game of a playoff series, Bob. He has one win in his four previous starts. Well, I'll tell you, Adam Wainwright is one of those pitchers. He has so many weapons at uh, his right hand that it depends on what he feels out there on the mound as the game progresses. He'll throw a fastball, a curveball, a cutter, a slider, a changeup, a splitter. And I don't even think Adam Wainwright himself knows what's working best until he gets out there on the mound. Interesting contrast with the two managers. Mike Matheny, very low key, doesn't believe in a lot of emotion. He lets the players do the job. He knows what they have to do, and you don't see much emotion from him. On the other hand, you have Clint Hurdle. <laughs> who has been a master motivator for this Pittsburgh team. No question about it. The saying of the day he has a, 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 what do you call it, the executive council, uh, his veteran players that uh, make some of the rules for the team. A real motivator. And uh, on the other side, you mentioned Mike Matheny, very low-key. He mentioned that he felt his best tact with his own players was to be confident, be relaxed, and they would play accordingly. Here are umpires. Tony Randazzo behind the plate. Wally Bell, Jerry Lane, and Sam Holbrook on the base pads. Jim Joyce down the left field line and Paul Nart down the right field line. And we're set to go as Starling Marte leading off for of the Pirates. And he's a threat to steal if he gets aboard. Hit 333 in 13 games against the Cardinals. He missed two series with a right hand contusion and swings and misses for strike one, and we're underway. Breaking ball is outside one and one. Wainwright led the National League with innings pitched and gets ahead of Marte one and two. Now don't expect a leadoff walk from Starling Marte. Uh, he's not a prototypical leadoff hitter. He likes to hack struck out 138 times walked only 25 times all season. Neil Walker is on deck, and Andrew McCutcheon will follow. Slings and misses, and Marte goes down the first out of game one of the division series. Back-to-back -back curveballs to end the sequence from Adam Wainwright. I expect to see Wainwright throw a lot of curveballs today, throw a lot of change-ups. This Pirates team, like a lot of Major League teams, really feast on fastballs. 1-0 with an ERA of three against the Pirates. In three starts this season as Neil Walker steps up. Homegrown Pittsburgher has lived through the struggles. 28-year-old native. And checks the swing and takes ball one outside. Walker has had good success against Wainwright, hitting 316, including a home run.
Slow curve is in there for the strike, and it's one and one to Walker. Yeah, that curveball is a pitch that generally Wainwright will incorporate the second and third time through a batting order just to give them a different look. But the fact he's throwing so many here to the first two hitters tells me that's how he's going to attack this Pirates team. Comebacker to Wainwright. Two down here in the first inning. And Andrew McCutcheon will be coming up for the Pirates. Right now, let's take a look at our Chevrolet pitch tracks. You see, used the fastball 69% of the time this year. Some of those cut fastballs that work away from right handed hitters the breaking ball, the big over the top curveball, the slider he will mix in on occasion, and the changeup is a very good weapon as well, although he doesn't use it much. Dangerous hitter, Andrew McCutcheon, MVP candidate. And he takes ball one outside, hit 21 homers and 84 runs batted in. And who will forget when he looked to the heavens following that third out in Pittsburgh in a dramatic scene, giving the Pirates the wild card victory in the play in game against the Cincinnati Reds. 2 0, oh, the count to McCutcheon. Pirate, Pirate card game to get here into the division series, and it's now two and one to McCutcheon, who's hit 429 against Wainwright and went deep once. Out of play, and it's two and two. Boy, a little extra gas on that fastball from Adam Wainwright, the last two at 97 and 96. He's a guy that generally pitches in the low 90s with command. Maybe feeling his oats out there a little bit in the early going. Curveball hit right to freeze at third. The throw in the dirt scooped out by Adams. And a 1 2 3 inning for Adam Wainwright, including a strikeout. So the Pirates go down and the Cardinals coming up in the first. Look at the Cardinals batting order brought to you by T-Mobile. 
Matt Carpenter leading off, followed by Carlos Beltran. Matt Holiday hitting third, and rookie Matt Adams in the cleanup spot. Yadier Molina in the fifth position. John Jay hitting sixth, followed by David Freeze, Daniel Descalso, and the pitcher Adam Wainwright. They'll be facing the veteran A.J. Burnett, 10 and 11, with a 3.30 earn run average's career best. Big time ground ball pitcher is A.J. Burnett. You see his numbers on this season. 209 strikeouts against only 67 walks held opponents to a 231 batting average. And the first man he faces will be Matt Carpenter who has been the catalyst for this Cardinal batting order and Mike Matheny exclaims where would we be without him Matt Carpenter with a phenomenal year 199 hits most by any Cardinal hitter since Albert Pujols in 03 and a phenomenal season for the young second baseman uh, his 392 on base percentage the highest for a Cardinal leadoff hitter in 40 years takes ball one outside not only that led the major leagues with 55 doubles and that's most in the season by any Cardinal left-handed hitter does that bring to mind one of the incredible greats Stan Musial yes he surpassed Stan the man Two and zero oh to Carpenter with Beltron on deck, followed by Matt Holiday. Well, if you talk to Mike Matheny about one of the main values that Matt Carpenter brings to this Cardinals club, uh, he he doesn't chase bad pitches. He takes a lot of pitches. He grinds out at bats. He takes his walks. Kind of sets the tone for the entire offense. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Two and one. Third baseman Alvarez is playing wide of third. The rest of the infield around to the right, but the outfield plays Carpenter straight away. Rounded to second base, and Walker makes the play, and Carpenter is retired for the first out in the bottom of the first. Take a look at the Pirates defensively today behind A.J. Burnett. It'll be Starling Marte in left field. Andrew McCutcheon, 2012 Gold Glove winner out in center field. Marlon Bird done a nice job both defensively and offensively since coming to the Buccos. Pedro Alvarez, 27 errors down there at third base. Clint Barmas at shortstop. Neil Walker at second base. Justin Morneau at first. Russell Martin with a Gold Glove to his credit behind the plate for right-hander A.J. Burnett. Tenth in the National League in fielding they've got a lot of speed in the outfield they cover a lot of ground as Carlos Beltran takes strike one Beltran I guess the best way you can describe him he's a professional hitter especially this time of year 14 postseason career home runs looks at the breaking pitch and Burnett is ahead of him two strikes yeah, there's only one player ahead of him on the all-time postseason list. Some guy named Ruth, I, Babe Ruth, maybe. I think I think that's who it is. That's him. Foul ball down the right field line, and uh, I guess if you want to put it in a nutshell of what this series is all about, Bob, simple. It really is simple. The Pirates pitching against the Cardinals' offense, especially uh, should the Cardinals get runners in scoring position. Pirate staff, as I mentioned a little while ago, uh, an extreme ground ball staff. And the Cardinals were historically good with runners in scoring position this year, so this is a good old fashioned uh, our best pitchers against your best hitters. And we'll be talking a lot about runners in scoring position because what the Cardinals did has exceeded any club by a wide margin since expansion went into effect back in 1961. One out here in the bottom of the first inning. And the count, one ball and two strikes to Beltron. 56 home runs in two seasons with the Cardinals and tied for the fourth most in the league in that span. Chop to second base. Neil Walker again making the play. And there are two down in the St. Louis first inning. And that will bring up Matt Holliday.
So Matt Holiday, a second half demon throughout his career, and this year was no exception. Really finished the season strong, unlike the gentleman that hit before him, Carlos Beltran, who kind of stumbled through the month of September. Matt Holiday, see his regular season numbers 342 against the Pirates in the 19 games head to head. Holiday had 23 runs batted in in the last 23 games of the season. Way out in front of that pitch and strike one to Holiday. Cardinals won six of nine games against the Pirates here at Bush Stadium. With Pittsburgh taking seven of ten at PNC Park. Game two is tomorrow afternoon and then after a day of travel. Game three will be Sunday in Pittsburgh. Checks his swing. Well, the Cardinals turned it on in September. They were the fourth best team in the National League at one point. And they ended up with a 19 and 8 mark. 2.71 ERA and over five runs a game. No one was better. And a strike two. Fastball. Now, Mike Matheny was talking about the way his ball club finished the season. He was very proud of them. They had a big series against the Nationals when Washington was still trying to work their way into that wild card race and then closed the season with a three game sweep of their perennial rivals, the Chicago Cubs. And he said the Cubs wouldn't mind it anything that to really hurt the Cardinals and knock them out of the, if not the division lead, maybe the best record in the National League. Low point for the Redbirds. They dropped four out of five in late July, early August to this Pittsburgh team and then went on that 17 and five tear. Two balls and two strikes to Matt Holiday with two out here in the Cardinal first. And our first full count of the day. On deck. If Holiday should keep it alive, will be the impressive rookie Matt Adams. Staying alive is Holiday, and it remains three and two. Last two division championships, the Cardinals. Beating the Nationals in five games last year and then beating the Phillies two years ago in a dramatic pitcher's duel in game five. Curveball and again getting a piece of it is Matt Holiday. A.J. Burnett, 36 year old from Little Rock, Arkansas, one of the few with postseason experience. Not many, as Bob indicated early. Outside, ball four, and Matt Holiday with a good at bat draws a two out walk. Yeah, we talked about it with Matt Carpenter leading off the game, but it certainly applies here to Matt Holiday. Those grinding at bats, forcing A.J. Burnett to throw more pitches, foul off the tough ones, take the pitches out of the zone, and ultimately getting a base on balls. and. Got some feedback from his own dugout. Uh, Mike <laughs> said that's uh, very important. Teammates on the bench recognize good at bats when they see him. No question. They're on the top step urging him on, and the guy at the plate knows it. And that goes as well for the rookie Matt Adams. The Cardinals have been relying on rookies, especially in the pitching department. But Matt Adams has certainly delivered with Alan Craig out early September for the rest of the season as he takes a strike. Eight home runs in the final 24 games for Big Matt Adams taking over for Craig. That seems kind of hard to believe for those of us who have watched uh, Craig throughout his career, but the Cardinals actually scored more runs per game with Adams in the lineup than they did with Craig. Foul ball and just foul down the right field line. 
You're talking about an Alan Craig who was the, the best with runners in scoring position and a Cardinal team that dominated that list this year. I'm surprised Matt Adams didn't run back to that left-handed batter's box. We have some cloud cover right now, and the visibility is about as good as it's going to be for a hitter. You see no shadows between home plate and the mound. Lead by Matt Holliday with two out here in the Cardinal first. And a ground ball hit to Walker, who gets three assists in the first inning. The Cardinals lead one, and after an inning here in St. Louis, no score. Welcome back to St. Louis, where game one of the NLDS between the Cardinals and Pirates is scoreless through one. I'm Matt Weiner here at Bush Stadium. You know, the Pirates are the new kids of the postseason, relatively speaking, after a two-decade, two-decade. But the Cardinals are actually the younger club by average age. In fact, St. Louis has the third youngest club in the postseason so far, not necessarily by design. Early injuries to closer Jason Mott, as well as Rafael Percal, and lately Alan Craig, Plus, the loss of three-fifths of their projected starting lineup have forced the Cards to fill in with folks from around the system. Rookie pitchers accounted for 36 wins in 52 starts this season, and at least one rookie will start in this NLCS. Not yet decided who, but one is penciled in for Game 4 in Pittsburgh. Guys? All right, Matt, thank you very much. In fact, uh, the way Mike Matheny has it worked out, with Lance Lynn going tomorrow, you're going to see most of the rookies pitching on the road in this uh, series as Justin Morneau has the count two balls in one strike in strike a big pickup from the Minnesota Twins and takes a call strike two and two so the Pirates made some moves the likes of the Marlin Bird who's on deck and Morneau helping him down the stretch yeah, lengthens that lineup Justin Morneau one of those guys that gives you a good professional at bat he's got some pop in that bat especially at PNC with that short porch in right field Fouls this off, and it's still two and two. 25 games. Didn't go deep, but knocked in three runs. But uh, really a steadying hand and good experience for this club. And Justin Morneau 
who is appearing in his third postseason. First, though, since 06. Wainwright in the sunlight. In the shade is Morneau, and the breaking ball is bounced to second baseman Carpenter, who makes the play, and Morneau's retired. Four in a row set down by Adam Wainwright as Marlon Byrd will come up for the Pirates. Now you mentioned the addition of Marlon Byrd. He hit 318 with three homers, 17 driven in as a member of the Pirates. And uh, you talk about a steadying influence, a really good defender. No matter where you put him in the outfield, but especially in right field, he's hit for some power. High energy guy. Well, and you really have to tip your cap to Marlon Bird. He went down and played baseball in the Mexican League to prove to teams that uh, he could still get the job done. Reviving his career, now finding himself in postseason. First time he's been in postseason, takes a strike. 12 years in the big leagues, and in his first postseason game, hit a home run in his first at bat. In Tuesday's wild card win over the Cincinnati Reds. This is another guy, Adam Wainwright, who hit a home run in his first at bat as well in baseball. How odd that is. One and one to Bird. Came over from the Mets along with catcher John Buck. Way behind that good fastball from Wainwright, and it's one and two to the Pirate right fielder. Two and two. Well, in talking to Clint Hurdle before the game, telling us that if you're going to get Wainwright, you've got to really try to get him early. Yeah, that's been the. Uh, the, the career record for Adam Wainwright and for most good pitchers you have to get them early in the ball game before they get the right split between their fastball and their off speed pitches Bird strikes out throwing the first is Molina and that'll be the second strikeout two away yeah Marlon Bird is a real good off speed hitter if it's in the strike zone but that time Wainwright got him to chase a pitch in the dirt way out in front and Yadier Molina there like a brick wall as usual to make sure it doesn't get through. So two down for the Pirates in the second inning and their number six hitter Pedro Alvarez coming up. It's not often that you have a number six hitter. Who leads the National League in home runs tied with Paul Goldschmidt of the Diamondbacks with 36. Drove in 100 runs fouls off the fastball strike one. Well, who has had a more impressive NFL start so far this season, Manning or Brady? Watch an all-new Behind the Mic debate powered by Ford at BleacherReport.com slash Behind the Mic. One and one to Alvarez. Ball and two strikes now. Down low. That's a dangerous location to go after Alvarez. Real good low ball hitter, especially from the middle of the plate in. Well, both the Cardinals and the Pirates staying alive by just getting a piece of some of these pitches that may be out of the strike zone. It remains two balls and two strikes with two outs. Yadier Molina. No one better behind the plate. And time is called. Yeah, Wainwright, it looked like he shook off a curveball, wanted to throw a fastball in. Yadier Molina took a quick glance over to the on deck circle and decided, wait a minute, let's rethink this. It looks like they're going to go with a fastball in. 
And a shot hit to the right side, and Carpenter playing on the outfield. Grass handles it for another 1-2-3 inning for Adam Wainwright, getting his second strike out of the game. In the middle of the second, still no score. Follow the MLB postseason on TBS wherever you go with postseason TV. Get alternate camera angles, live batting practice, real-time highlights, and more on desktop and mobile devices. Get postseason TV now for just $4.99 at MLB.com. Yadier Molina will lead off for the Cardinals in the second inning. Bob, remember when uh, he was simply known as a gold glove catcher? Uh, those memories are long gone. <laughs> He's one of the most complete players in the game, period, no matter what position you play. Fourth in the National League with a 319 average this year as he swings and misses for strike one against A.J. Burnett. Molina hitting only 160, four for 25 in his history against Burnett. One ball and one strike, and Molina's 44 doubles, the most by any National League catcher ever, and only Pud Rodriguez with Detroit had more. He had 47 back in 96. All-round threat is Yadier Molina, and just missing outside and it's two and one to the Cardinal catcher well, to say he's a workhorse is an understatement he caught 1115 in a third inning second most in the majors this year and that's after missing two weeks of the season and there's a line drive off the glove of Barmas into left field and Molina is aboard sharply hit and it looked like Barmas who's Pretty good defensive shortstop. Should make that play, but we'll get another look. It's a base hit. Middle of the plate fastball for Molina, who barreled it up. You'll see here in our total motion, squared it up right on the barrel of the bat. 
Ball ticked off the glove of Clint Barmas. He's a guy that for most of the season came in as a defensive replacement for Jordy Mercer late in the ball game. Odd to see him miss a line drive like that. First hit of the game. And the second base runner for the Cardinals is John Jay swinging at the first pitch. Fouls it off for strike one. Jay, a native of Miami, Florida. Finished the regular season with a 14 game hitting streak. Now Jay with a little different role in the offense this year for the Cardinals only Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates and Carlos Gomez of the Brewers had more RBI than John Jay this season for center fielders. 67 runs batted in were a career high for him. And he got hot late he was hitting just 253 in August and then. 318 the rest of the way. Molina the runner at first base and. Burnett misses again two and one to Jay with David freeze on deck for the Cardinals. And a foul ball out of play two balls and two strikes Cardinals are not. A running team. In fact, they had the fewest stolen bases, 45. Not that Yadier Molina would take off, but this team does not really hit home runs, nor do they steal bases. And yet, they were the highest scoring team. Yeah, they're not uh, not your father's uh, Whitey Herzog type Cardinals that uh, used to be a track team out there. They make uh, get the string together, some base hits and walks. And there's a ball hit out to center field. Charging is McCutcheon. It'll drop for a base hit. Molina will stop at second base. Back to back singles by Molina and Jay with nobody out, and the Cardinals have a threat here in the second. Yeah, I think Andrew McCutcheon uh, may have had some visibility issues out there. John Jay with a little floater into shallow center. McCutcheon got a late start. You can tell by the shadow. He's looking right up into the afternoon sun here at Bush Stadium. I don't think he had a real good read on that ball off the bat. So a chance for the Cardinals here against A.J. Burnett in the second and David Freeze, who's hoping that the postseason spark, which he had in 2011, will boost him after what was really a subpar regular season. Good stop in the dirt by Russell Martin, and it's ball one. Both Walker and Barmas are bunched towards second base where Molina is the base runner. Molina checking Walker especially. Nobody out fastball and a strike and it's one and one to freeze. Free starting the series with six career postseason home runs. St. Louis native. Fans are hoping that lightning will strike again in postseason. Time called and Martin goes out to the mound to talk to his pitcher. Well, our innovative stat brought to you by Nissan is the St. Louis Cardinals 2013 hitting with runners in scoring position. Big part of their success story, Bob. Well, and being a former manager and naturally paranoid, when I saw the 330 <laughs> batting average with runners in scoring position, I wanted to see the home road splits, but identical across the board, so I apologize. Well, this is what they do an a bounding ball. Glove by Walker goes to second for the force, and that's all. First out is made. Molina goes to third and Freeze is on at first. So one out. Runners at the corners for the Cardinals with Descalso coming up. A little bit of a risky play by Neil Walker trying to spin around and get the lead runner at second. But because he's able to do that, keeps the double play in order here with Daniel Descalso making his way up to the plate. Nice play. 
So one out. And the Cardinals have a runner at third in Yadier Molina. And here is Daniel Descalso. Real reliable performer for this team. Took over for Dave Cosma. And off the fist, a ground ball. At second, Barmas makes the tag on the base, throws to first for the double play to end the threat. So the Cardinals at first and second, none out. First and third, one out, and don't score. 0-0 zero, zero after two. Want to know the secrets of being a home run hitter? Well, Tim Ferriss shows you how to knock it out of the park. Go to upwave.com slash baseball. Scoreless game into the Pirates' third inning, and Adam Wainwright has retired the first six Pirates he's faced. So the bottom third coming up, led by Russell Martin. And Martin takes a strike. Russell Martin hit two home runs. In that National League wild card win over Pittsburgh on Tuesday, and only one other multi home run game this year, and that was here back in April. And Wainwright not taking any chances, fires two fastballs past him, and it's 0 2. It'll be Martin, Clint Barmas, and the pitcher, A.J. Burnett. Bob, you're a former catcher. What has Russell Martin meant to this team? Oh, he's meant everything. I mean, uh, he's a catch first, call a game first, offense comes secondary. Now, he has provided a lot of offense for this Pirates lineup, but his main value, and if you talk to Ray Searidge, the pitching coach, or Clint Hurdle, the manager of the Pirates, they'll tell you his main value is the way he has handled this staff. Had some injuries in that uh, shark tank bullpen toward the end of the season, and they did not miss a beat. Mark Melanson stepped in for Jason Grilly, saved some big games down the stretch for the Pirates, and they give a lot of the credit to Russell Martin. Martin and Francisco Liriano, the big acquisitions during the offseason as Martin chases and strikes out for the first out in the third inning and the third strikeout of the game for Wainwright. 
I mentioned it early on, this Pirates team, a bunch of dead fastball hitters up and down the lineup, which is not uncommon in Major League Baseball. And Adam Wainwright really taking advantage. You see him leading with the heel of his hand. That's the big slow curveball. Had Russell Martin way out in front. One away to Clint Barmas. Who played for Clint Hurdle with the Colorado Rockies and fouls the pitch back for a strike as Bob mentioned took over at shortstop in September for Jody Mercer. 34 year old from Vincennes Indiana. Second year with the Buccos. And breaking pitch on the inside corner for strike two. Curveball probably a little farther inside and maybe a little more up than Adam Wainwright wanted it. But Clint Barmas, as I just mentioned, dead fastball hitter. He's looking for something he can pull to left field. Ball and two strikes to Barmas, who has hit well against the Cardinals this year. Knocked in six runs, the most against any club, and also seven for 21. Not bad against Wainwright with three doubles and a home run. One two pitch and speared by Freeze at third. David Freeze going to his right with a superb play for out number two. Not quite sure if that ball stays in fair territory had David Freeze not made this catch, but if it is a fair ball, that's down in the corner for extra bases for Barmas. Adam Wainwright loves it out there on the mound. Looked like the same curveball that he got a called strike earlier in the sequence. That time Barmas was all over it. So there are two down, and here is A.J. Burnett. And we saw the curveball that kind of rolled up there on the inside part of the plate. Barmas was ready for the next one. It looked like that may have hooked foul, but uh, the moot point. Nice catch by David Fries. He wasn't going to take any chances. <laughs> he says, I'm going to get this one. And the count one and one to Burnett, who hit 0 68 with two runs batted in. And the official call was that it was a fair ball. Now two and one to Burnett. Wainwright falling behind his opposite number. Well, this is where you do not want to waste pitches if you're Adam Wainwright. 33 strikeouts in 59 at bats during the regular season. Over half of his at bats ended up in a strikeout. Just go right after him. Last thing Wainwright wants to do is lose Burnett and face Marte, the top of the order. And the crowd, as they do every time there are two strikes, begin their rhythmic chant and wave their white towels. And a check swing roller to Carpenter. And the first nine Pirates go down. Adam Wainwright with three strikeouts. We're in the middle of the third.
MLB Network is your home for two division series games. And tomorrow, we'll see the Pirates and Cardinals in game two of the NLDS, 1 p.m. Eastern, noon central, exclusively on MLB Network. And a couple of legendary figures, Bob Costas and my old partner, Jim Cott, will be calling the game. Adam Wainwright coming up here in the Cardinal third inning. No score. Facing A.J. Burnett, who has given up a couple of hits, got out of a jam with the help of a double play last inning. Not a bad hitter. Six homers in his career. And as we mentioned, one on the first pitch he saw back on May 24th in 2006 against the Giants. And we mentioned Starling Marte also is in that category. And he'll be leading off next inning for the Pirates. Both these teams are riding current streaks the Cardinals winning their last six of the regular season as you know the Pirates beat the Reds three times in Cincinnati to get the home field advantage for the wild card game and then uh, went home and beat them there and it's two and two to Wayne Wright yeah, for the Reds fans out there really uh, unfortunate that the Reds offense picked absolutely the wrong time of year to uh, to disappear, but uh, they just couldn't get anything going offensively against this Pirates team. Right now, the shadow's not a factor between the pitcher and the catcher. And lo and behold, A.J. Burnett goes to a full count against Adam Wainwright, who also had to throw, throw a few extra pitches when he faced A.J. Burnett the first time. Boy, pitchers talk about inning management. Uh, A.J. Burnett worked hard to get that double play ball off the bat of Daniel Descalso to get out of the second inning and have the pitcher leading off in the bottom of the third. And now he's one pitch away from losing the pitcher here to start the inning. So having to work hard against Adam Wainwright. Seventh pitch to Wainwright coming up next. And he walks him. Second walk for A.J. Burnett, and he walks Wainwright to lead off the Cardinal third. Well, Mike Matheny was telling us how the bench uh, will exhort the hitters to put together good grinding at bats, and Adam Wainwright spends a lot of time sitting on that bench. I'm sure he's been a more than a casual observer from the bench. He got a big round of applause from his skipper, his coaching staff, and his teammates in that first base dugout after that walk. And now the top of the order, Matt Carpenter comes up with a man at first and Beltron to follow. And the first pitch is ball one. Alvarez was uh, Poised to look for a possible sacrifice attempt by Carpenter, who checks with Jose Akendo, the third base coach. Wayne Wright with the lead at first. So here's a guy with 199 hits this year looking to see if he's going to be sacrificing. Not there, but a hit on the count, 2 0. Well, how patient is Matt Carpenter? Only one player in the major leagues had a lower swing percentage than Matt Carpenter, and that was Mike Trout. He's going to make you throw strikes. He's going to take some of those strikes. He's going to work some deep, long at bats. Ideal leadoff hitter. And the fastball is in for the strike, and it's two and one to Carpenter. Adam Wainwright did not draw a walk in the regular season in 71 at bats. So it's a new year. <laughs> <laughs> Everything changes in the playoffs. <laughs> and there is Adam Wainwright. Two balls and a strike to Carpenter.
And it's outside three and one. So Burnett having location problems here in this third inning, walking Wainwright on a 3 2 pitch and now falling behind Carpenter three and one. Normally, Mike Matheny likes to start runners on 3 1 and 3 2 counts, but since it's the pitcher running at first base, uh, we're going to have to wait and see how aggressive he wants to be with Adam Wainwright running the bases. And he does have Beltron waiting to hit. And a ground ball, base hit to right field for Carpenter, and Wainwright will stop at second. And so for the second straight inning, Cardinals have the first two base runners on. Three hits now off of A.J. Burnett. And Beltron coming to the plate. Well, I call this the curse of a sinker ball pitcher. 3-1 fastball bounded on the ground to the right side. It just happened to find a hole past Neil Walker on into right field. And when you're a guy that throws almost 60% ground ball, some of them are going to find holes in the infield, and that was the case right there. So Burnett facing trouble last inning, got out of it with the help of a double play. And now the heart of the order coming up for the Cardinals with Carpenter at first, Wainwright at second, Beltron who bounced to Walker at second in the first inning. Balls behind 1 and 0. Carlos Beltron, rookie of the year back in 99 with Kansas City. This is his fourth postseason experience with three different teams the Astros, the Mets, and two with the Cardinals. One and one. By the way, A.G. Burnett is one and one here at Bush Stadium, but his earned run average, you ready for this? 8.10. Two and one to Beltron, and on deck is Matt Holiday. Well, just take your pick up and down this Cardinals lineup. Everybody hitting with runners in scoring position this year. How'd Freddie Freeman get in there? He must have gotten a pass or something. <laughs> Private club, Bob. Here's the two one. And a fly ball hit down the right field line, close to the foul pole, and this ball is gone. It's a home run. Three-run homer for Carlos Beltran continues his postseason surge. Oh, just a middle of the plate fastball to a good fastball hitter. Now tied with Babe Ruth for postseason home runs in his career. Just able to keep that one fair down the right field line. A lot of backspin on that ball as it came off the barrel. That bat had tremendous carry to right field. And Adam Wainwright saying it looks good to me. And here's Matt Holiday. The Cardinals have jumped in front three to nothing. And the ball won to Holiday. So Carlos Beltran with his 15th postseason home run, tying him with the Babe. And now with 28 runs batted in in postseason as well. So coming out for a bow is Beltran and a base hit to right center field. That's going to get all the way through the fence. Matt Holiday will go into second with a stand-up double. And the Cardinals are getting to A.J. Burnett early. Five hits off of A.J. Burnett. I think we're seeing the cumulative effect of that first at bat by Adam Wainwright in this inning. Seeing a lot of pitches, working the base on balls, setting it up for the top of the order. 
Matt Carpenter, same thing. Long at bat, got a 3-1 count before he got his base hit. And then a couple of mistakes here to Beltron and Holiday. And the Cardinals are rolling here early. And Ray Searage. Pirates outstanding pitching coach coming out to the mound to talk to Burnett got out of trouble with the double play last inning but walked Wainwright on 3 2 Carpenter singled and Beltron with a three run homer in a holiday follows with a gap double to right center Matt Adams will come to the plate now, now we've talked a lot about A.J. being a sinker ball pitcher getting almost 60 percent ground balls this season. Yeah, you see his arsenal the breaking ball he throws almost well actually throws more than he throws his fastball in the straight changeup. He's going to start to have to mix in some of those secondary pitches to this Cardinals lineup especially when he's behind in the count. Here's Matt Adams bounce to second his first time up. Swing and a miss strike one and just moments after you showed the Cardinals phenomenal runners in scoring position numbers this year. Beltron delivered with a three run homer. Now Holiday at second. And still nobody out. And that pitch hit him. Matt Adams is hit by a pitch. And a little slow getting up. Back to back hard sliders from A.J. Burnett after that visit from his pitching coach trying to go to a pitch that he hadn't featured so far in this ball game. That would clips the back foot of Matt Adams sends him down to the ground in that left handed batter's box. So now the Cardinals with runners at first and second nobody out and Yadier Molina. Holiday at second Adams at first. Molina started the second inning with a line shot off the glove of Clint Barmas for a base hit. Takes the ball inside. Cardinals had the best record in the league, tied with the Red Sox, best overall. But know how important it is to win this first game. Knowing that they will be facing Francisco Liriano, who they've had a lot of trouble with when the series moves to Pittsburgh Sunday for game three. Boy, and Liriano right on top of his game at this point of the season. Now yeah, the Cardinals uh, probably feel like they need to sweep these two here at Bush before going back to PNC. One and one to Molina. Still nobody out. And no activity. As of yet in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Count even to two and two. Now far be it for me to second guess Clint Hurdle. He knows his team. He knows A.J. Burnett a lot better than I do. But I think in the postseason, you've got to be a little quicker on the trigger finger than you normally would be during the regular season, especially with that drop dead bullpen that Clint Hurdle has available. You got to be real quick when you're playing a one game winner take all kind of deal, but uh, you just can't let games get away from you. Burnett's 2 2 pitch and a full count. A.J. Burnett struggling here in the third. Two on, nobody out. Three runs already in on Carlos Beltrons. Second debt home run. This will be the 26th pitch for Burnett. Runners go. The pitch outside. Ball four. And Molina walks to load the bases. Mm -hmm. 
And now he may have some stirring in the Pirate bullpen. Second walk this inning. Still nobody out. And John Jay coming to the plate. Holiday goes to third. Adams is on second and Molina at first base. And John Jay, who singled to center field, last inning at the plate. Cardinals looking for more. Breaking pitch outside ball one to Jay. And Jenmar Gomez gets up in the Pirate bullpen. Three runs on five hits with nobody out here in the third inning. And missing inside. Burnett has missed more outside and inside than low or high thus far. And he's really tried to use that slider. It's, a, it's really a hard cut fastball. It looks like a slider to a hitter. And it just hasn't been able to command it. Ever since his pitching coach came to the mound, he's tried to go to that pitch, just hasn't been able to command it. 2 and 0. Oh. Jay could be getting a good pitch here, and he fouls it off. And it's 2 and 1 to John Jay. It all started with a walk to Adam Wainwright. First time Wainwright has walked all year. So there's Gomez. Carpenter followed with a single and Beltron with a three run homer, but it didn't stop there. Matt Holliday with a double to right center field. Matt Adams hit by a pitch and then Molina walked. And it's two and two now as Burnett delivers a good pitch there to Jay. Well, because he is such an extreme ground ball pitcher, if he could find a way to retire John Jay without another run scoring in this situation, a uh, possible ground ball by David Fries, and he's out of the inning, uh, really limiting the damage. Three runs right now look pretty good if they can get uh, out of it with that. Here's the 2 2. Just missed. And the count is full, three and two to Jay. Now, Russell Martin tried to pull that pitch back to the corner. That breaking ball just never really took the break. Kind of spun out there off the outside corner, and Martin tried to buy a strike. Holiday, Adams, Molina. Nobody out. Ball four. And the run is forced in. John Jay walks with the bases loaded. Matt Holiday comes in to score, and everyone moves up a base. Well, you think with those numbers, with runners in scoring position, this Cardinals team would be hyper aggressive with guys in scoring position, but two walks in the inning. In that particular situation, they're going to make you throw strikes. Struggle for A.J. Burnett. Trying to match Adam Wainwright here and give the Pirates a chance here to try to steal a road game in this series. Here's David Freeze bounced into a fielder's choice. Nobody out. Bases remain loaded. And four runs in. And falling behind. I don't remember the last time Burnett got ahead of a batter. That's why he's been in trouble the entire inning. Yeah, you think back to his postseason career with the Yankees. In 39 innings of work, he walked 23 batters. Starting to slide down that road right here. Fastball and freeze. Misses. And it's one and one. Freeze is the eighth batter to bat against A.G. Burnett here in the third inning. Four runs are in. There have been a home run, a double, a single, a hit batsman, and three walks. And one and two, Burnett 
in a rare event in this inning gets ahead of the hitter. Adams, Molina, and Jay are the base runners now. Two and two. The only time Burnett has been ahead of a hitter in this inning was the opening batter Wainwright. He was had one and two and then lost him. And then the avalanche. Daniel Descalso is on deck would be the ninth batter here in the third. And a ground ball base hit. Past Morno into right field. Two runs will score. And the Cardinals now lead it six to nothing. And here comes another run coming in. Here comes the throw at the plate. Not in time. John Shea saw the ball get loose around first base. Sloppy relay by the Pirates. And he took advantage of it, and it's now seven to nothing. Boy, real nice situational hitting by David Free. Shoots that ball right down the first baseline past the diving Justin Morneau. Yeah, Molina comes around to score easily. And then as the throw came back into the infield, as you mentioned, John Jay very alertly saw the ball hit. David Fries at first base and Skinner into foul territory and he too came in to score. So that'll be all for A.J. Burnett and seven runs in the third still nobody out. From the creator of Cougar Town and Scrubs, TBS presents Ground Floor, a brand new workplace comedy starring John C. McGinley. It premieres Thursday, November 14th at 10, 9 central only on TBS. A wild third inning, to say the least, and the Cardinals have scored seven runs. It was a single for Freeze. Knocked in two runs and an error on Marlon Bird, the right fielder, enabling Jay to score and Freeze to go to second base. And Jenmar Gomez will be coming on in, making his 35th appearance. He was tagged for two runs in an inning in Sunday's season finale at Cincinnati. Also started eight games, came off out of the bullpen 26 times, and comes in for Burnett here. He's looking to stop the bleeding right now get the Pirates back into that third base dugout and give them a chance to take a deep breath. This has uh, been quite an offensive outburst here by the Cardinals in the bottom half of the third. And Daniel Descalso who bounced into an inning any double play last inning. Takes a fastball for strike one. So uh, not only an offensive outburst but uh, the Pirates contributed. 
three walks hit batsman by Burnett and an error. One and one to Descalso. Ninth batter to come up here in the Cardinal third. Crowd buzzing over this wild third inning. And there's a chopper to Barmas and gets the first out. Retiring Descalso as Freeze goes to third base. And that'll bring up Adam Wainwright. And Wainwright started it all by drawing a 3 2 walk. I guess he doesn't mind waiting in the dugout all this time, does he? I don't well. think any starting pitcher will complain about sitting there watching your teammates cross home plate seven times. Yeah. Wainwright walked and scored a run. The infield playing in with Freeze at third base. And the first pitch taken for a ball. Chopper to third. Freeze gets back. And Alvarez. Makes the throw over to first for the second out. A nice effort there by Pedro Alvarez. He knew he had plenty of time to get the out across the diamond with Wainwright running down the first baseline. So he tries to beat Freeze over there to the bag at third. You can see he still has enough time to regroup and fire on to first for the easy out. Well, if you're the Pirate fan, you would have hoped after Beltron hit the three-run homer, things would settle down. Maybe nobody out, but the bases were empty, and then things got worse. Four more runs came across, and here is Matt Carpenter, who singled earlier in this inning. One and zero to him. Carpenter one for two in the game. Highest average for a Cardinal leadoff hitter in four decades. Hmm. One and one. Now ball and two strikes. Jenmar Gomez acquired from the Indians in January. After three seasons with Cleveland. Yeah, Gomez has good stuff. Good fastball slider change up combination and the ability to miss bats gave up only 56 hits in over 80 innings of work this year. Burnett responsible for the runner at third in two hits, two innings, giving up six hits, walking four, seven runs, not all of them earned. And there's a pop up behind third, and it's the third baseman Alvarez who makes the catch to finally. Bring it in to the inning. 11 men come to the plate for the Cardinals, but the big blow is Carlos Beltran's three run homer. Cardinals get seven. As we go to the fourth, they're up seven to nothing.
Well, they measured Carlos Beltran's home run at 443 feet, and they say it's the second longest by a left-handed hitter in this Bush Stadium's history. Well, it's seven to nothing, and Starling Marte shows bunt, takes ball one as we go to the fourth inning. Adam Wainwright now has a huge cushion. Marte struck out his first time up. And it's 2-0. and will be followed by Walker and McCutcheon. See if that seven-run cushion changes Adam Wainwright's approach. Uh, many times you get spotted to a big lead in the game, and rather than try to set hitters up and use your off speed pitches use your secondary pitches you just go right after them with fastballs away hoping to let your defense work behind you have some quick innings as he did there and the count now two balls and two strikes Wainwright retired the first nine hitters he's faced and he has a strikeout in each of the first three innings Count runs full to Marte. Out of play. Starling Marte missed two series against the Cardinals while on the disabled list. From late August to early September, had a right hand contusion. Same was stepped on by Martin Prado of the Diamondbacks. He'll turn 25 next Wednesday. Stays alive. Fouling off Wainwright's fastball. Talked about how these teams were really practically even in their season series. Pirates won 10 out of the 19, winning 7 out of 10 in Pittsburgh. Cardinals winning 6 out of 9 here. And it's popped up. Adams chasing it in foul territory. And it falls into the photographer's box. We mentioned that Matt Adams uh, more than replaced Alan Craig's offensive numbers, but uh, leaves a little bit to be desired, desired defensively. Doesn't have the same kind of range or grace around the bag at first, but the Cardinals will gladly take the trade off uh, with what he provides with that left hand of power bat. And as I said, it was the ball that fell into the box, not Adams, <laughs> fortunately for the Cardinals. Craig missed the final 23 games of the year. And a good at bat here for Starling Marte. Tenth pitch up coming to him. And it keeps going. So after getting seven runs and having a pretty decent weight on the bench, Wainwright comes out, getting a workout from Marte. <laughs> Yadier Molina taking a little extra time before getting back behind home plate. It's not unusual to see a catcher do that to give the pitcher a breather on the mound, but I don't think I've ever seen it to give the first baseman a breather. <laughs> Matt Adams had to chase a couple of those foul balls over to the railing on the first base side, and I think Yadier decided to uh, just give him a second to catch his breath. That wasn't that long a run, Bob. Again, the 3-2 pitch and a check swing. That pitch would have been inside for a ball four. So pitch number 12 will be coming up now for Wainwright against Marte. Here in the fourth inning, Pirates... After 20 straight losing seasons, finishing last nine times, seven different managers, finally getting into the charm circle. And a fastball, strike three. And Marte looks at a fastball right down the pipe for out number one and the fourth strikeout of the game for Adam Wainwright. 
Well, only one breaking ball in the entire sequence that time. Missed with a 2 2 curve ball, but all fastballs and cutters, everything in the low to mid 90s that time. Freezes Marte with that fastball in the inside corner. So one out to Neil Walker, who bounced back to Wainwright in the first inning. Grew up 16 miles from Pittsburgh. And 1 0, 6 of the 11 first pitch strikes thrown by Wainwright. Missed on that last one and now falls behind 2 0 to Walker. Walker was drafted in the first round as a catcher back in 2004 and three years later moved to the infield. Here's Carpenter. Two out. Two down here in the fourth. And Andrew McCutcheon will come to the plate for Pittsburgh. Bounce to third his first time up. Talk about birthdays. He'll turn 27 next Thursday. That's something to brag about right there. Mm -hmm. Not too many guys can say they have numbers like that against Adam Wayne right in their career. Going to say also can brag about his mother Petrino who sang the national anthem prior to Tuesday's wild card game against Cincinnati. There's a strike on the inside corner. One and one to Andrew McCutcheon. Who had 21 homers and 84 runs driven in during the regular year. One and two. Two two now to McCutcheon. And a ground ball up the middle and a base hit for Andrew McCutcheon. So after retiring the first 11 Pirates, Andrew McCutcheon lashes a single to center field. First base runner and first hit of the game for the Pirates. Well, no question that Andrew McCutcheon is the face of this fran uh, Pirates franchise. And uh, it was kind of funny earlier this year, somebody asked him, uh, how do you know that you're the face of the franchise? He says, well, I walked down the street the other day and they didn't confuse me for Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald, the Cardinals wide receiver who went to the University of Pittsburgh and with the dreads and the whole look. Uh, Andrew said that for years people have confused him for Larry Fitzgerald. But when they finally recognized him as Andrew McCutcheon, that's when he knew he had actually made it in the Steel City. <laughs> An odd way of finally reaching that status, <laughs> what do you think? Justin Morneau bounced to second his first time up and he lifts the ball out to right field for a base hit and stopping at second will be McCutcheon. So back to back singles by McCutcheon and Morno here in the fourth inning with Marlon Bird coming to the play. Bird struck out his first time up. And it is seven to nothing, but after 11 are retired in a row, it's good to see something, a little bit of an uprising, whether it uh, nets any runs or not this inning, Bob. Well, not to mention for the Pirates, they finally get Adam Wainwright into the stretch position. He was very comfortable pitching out of the windup out there for the first three and two thirds innings, now working out of the stretch. Line foul into the crowd by Bird. Strike one. He had a career high 24 home runs. 21 of them with the Mets. McCutcheon at second. Morneau is at first. Pirates who 
We're tied for third in home runs. Could use the long ball here to make a move to try to get back in this game. Well, we showed you earlier uh, in the 19 games head to head between these two teams, the Pirates homered 19 times. Went around for strike two. Marlon Bird has always been a very aggressive hitter. Loves the first pitch fastball and after that likes breaking balls in the strike zone. That time Wainwright got him to chase a bad one. And strike three. And that's the second time he has struck out and that'll do it. Two hits. Two left in the middle of the fourth. Seven to nothing. Right now, let's take a look at our Goodyear Superior Performance. Well, if it's that time of year, the Superior Performance usually comes from Carlos Beltran. You see his postseason career numbers among the best in Major League Baseball history. And this is after stumbling into the postseason. We mentioned he had a rough September, hit only 217, slugged just over 300. But uh, you put the bunting on the ballpark, and Carlos Beltran shows up. <laughs> He might have helped put the bunting on himself. <laughs> so excited about that. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Three run homer last inning was the big blow as the Cardinals scored seven runs. And A.J. Burnett, the official score rules that that last run would have scored nonetheless. So all of the seven runs given up by Burnett are earned. Two strikes to Beltron. He'll be followed by Matt Holliday and Matt Adams. Seven to nothing. The Cardinals are leading here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Dick Stockton along with Bob Brenly and Matt Weiner here. Game one of the best of five. Between the team with the best record in the National League, the Cardinals and the wild card winning Pirates. 
Game two will be tomorrow afternoon on MLB Network. Lance Lynn for the Cardinals and Garrett Cole will be pitching for the Pirates. And the pitch is outside two and two interesting how third baseman Alvarez and the shortstop Barmas are really bunched together toward the bag. And Walker playing on the edge of the outfield grass. At second in outfield straight away. Breaking pitch and it's popped up to the left side. Russell Martin chases it along with Alvarez who runs over to make a catch and he had a long run to make for sure. Well, moments ago, we spoke to Clint Hurdle in the dugout, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Well, a tough scenario, obviously, and after Beltron's home run, you keep it at three. It's one thing, and now it's seven, so you got a little obstacle here. We do. We embrace hard around here. I mean, game 164 <laughs> didn't start out the way we wanted, no doubt about that. We're going to play. We're going to keep playing, keep after it. Keep getting a little bit better every inning. Hey, Clint, we know you're a great motivator. You come up with different sayings and uh, little things here and there to motivate your team. What can you say to motivate them when they're down 7 nothing? Right now, I just told them, hey, this is right up our alley. We've embraced hard all year long. This is nothing different. What a great spirit he is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Holiday. First pitch to Barmas, and there were two away. I found it kind of funny when we talked to him in his office earlier today. He spoke about the bumblebee, which is black and gold, by the way, black and yellow. And the bumblebee is not aerodynamically suited to fly, but it flies anyway. I think that was a reference to his team, and a lot of people didn't think they would be in this position, but here they are, so they're going to enjoy every minute of it. Neil Huntington said about Clint Hurdle, he says he was a well height prospect, he was a failed prospect. He had to make comebacks in his career. He was a minor league coach, minor league manager, major league coach. He has seen it all and done it all. Here is Matt Adams taking strike one. 0 for 1, bounced out in the first inning and then was hit by a pitch but came around to score. With a couple of walks with the bases loaded. Last inning. And the Pirates are playing Matt Adams virtually the same way they played Beltron. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Matt Adams, the overwhelming majority of his hits came to the right side just like that. Base hit to right field for Adams. Two out single. And hit number seven for the Cardinals. Uh, we mentioned the shift of the Pirates. They do cheat Alvarez over to the shortstop position, and Barmas is up the middle of the field, but Walker was playing almost straight away at his second base position, which left just enough hole for Adams to sneak that grounder through into right. Cardinals have had base runners in each of the first four innings. Here's Yadier Molina, who's been on twice, with a single in the second inning, line drive off of Barmas' glove and then he walked and eventually came around and scored and the count 1-0 and to Yadier Molina his brother Benji who last played in 2010 is in his first years Cardinals assistant hitting coach He's got a lot of brothers including Jose who's playing in the postseason for the Rays and they're playing the Red Sox slowly hit Alvarez and that will do it. One hit, one left after four, seven to nothing.
Well, the arch here in St. Louis, maybe no better symbol uh, in the Midwest than the fabulous arch that looms over Bush Stadium, second Bush Stadium that the Cardinals have used. First pitch, Pedro Alvarez hits it way deep and way out of here. Alvarez on the first pitch. Homers off of Adam Wainwright, and it's now a 7-1 to game. So Alvarez, who had 36 homers to tie Goldschmidt for the National League lead in the regular season. There's a Pirate fan. Gets the Pirates on the scoreboard. Quick strike offense from the number six hitter in the lineup with 36 bombs and 100 driven in during the regular season. Gets a belt-high fastball out over the plate and hits that one off the facing of the second deck. We've seen a couple of long home runs to right field here today. And a shot off the glove of Wainwright and Russell Martin is going to be tossed out at first base. Good hustle that time by Matt Carpenter to get Martin for the first out. But Martin hit it hard. And he ran hard. He just didn't run fast. This is late in the season for a catcher. A lot of squats and standing up. And Russell Martin trying everything he can to leg out that infield hit. But a nice barehanded play by Matt Carpenter denies it. So there's one away. And Pirates, who with two out, had their first two hits of the game before Bird ended the fourth inning. And then Alvarez homering to lead off here in the fifth. One out. And here's Clint Barmas. And a strike to Barmas, who lined out to David Freeze his first time up. Out of play. Vin Mazzaro is now up in the Pirate bullpen. Adam Wainwright has allowed three hits now. There's Mazzaro. He has struck out four. Chasing, foul tipped into the glove, and Barmas goes out. That's the fifth strikeout. Well, moments ago, we spoke to Mike Matheny in the dugout, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Mike, I would think this is a manager's dream in the first game of the playoffs to get out to the early lead, right? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely take that, but uh, also uh, we'll take Adam going out about out the way that he has. He's uh, really throwing the ball well. He had a good curveball going today. It's nice to watch. Hey, Skipper, we talked to you earlier about uh, your offensive approach and grinding out at bats and how everybody uh, you know, on your side of the field has kind of embraced that. Did you ever think the inning would start with Adam Wainwright grinding out and at bat taking a walk? You know what? He's taking good at bats all season long. But, uh, yeah, the guys started putting together good ones behind it. Carlos doing what uh, he's done so well all season long. And, and guys are just taking what they're giving. You know, we uh, took some walks right there and then got the big hits when we needed them. Well, Bizarro up in the bullpen, but Genmar Gomez coming up and batting for himself and takes strike two. Gomez in relief of Burnett strikes out. Six strikeouts for Wainwright. Alvarez with the leadoff homer makes it seven to one in favor of the Cardinals.
Los Angeles 1947 where the good become bad and the bad become gods. Don't miss TNT's epic three week event from the Walking Dead's Frank Darabont Mob City premieres Wednesday December 4th at 9 8 central on TNT. Lights on. As we get into the twilight here in St. Louis as the Cardinals batting in the bottom of the fifth against Jenmar Gomez. It'll be John Jay, David Fries, and Daniel Descalso. Jay has singled and walked, driving in a run with the base on balls, and came around and scored on an error. And takes ball one. Seven runs, seven hits for the Cardinals. One run, three hits, one error for the Pirates. John Jay, as we said, finished the regular season with a 14-game hitting streak and then promptly got a base hit in his first postseason at bat in the second. Two and one to Jay. Well, we've documented John Jay's uh, outstanding offensive season, but uh, if you ask Mike Matheny, his primary value to this team is covering ground in the outfield. You've got uh, subpar defender in Matt Holiday, and Holiday, Carlos Beltran in right, uh, really struggling with his knees at this stage of his career. John Jay is a center fielder that's forced to cover a lot of ground out there in center. And he's been. Uh, a reliable, durable player completing his fourth season with the Cardinals, having played in more than 100 games in each of those campaigns. Gomez with the count two and two to Jay. And a line drive foul into the box seats down the right field line. A.J. Burnett started today, gave up a walk in the first inning, got out of trouble in the second, helped by a double play, but then the roof caved in in the third. As 11 men came up and the Cardinals scored seven runs. Burnett worked two plus innings, gave up six hits, seven runs all earned, and walked four, including the home run to Beltron, the three run blow. Three and two now to Jay. And low ball four, and Jay walks for the second time to lead off the fifth. Well, the bottom of the third inning. This is the story of the game. It all started with a walk to Adam Wainwright. And then Beltron with a big three-run homer. But it didn't end there. John Jay walked with the bases loaded. There were three walks in the inning, and then Freeze with a base hit down the right field line and on an error. From the right fielder Marlon Bird, Jay came around and scored. And seven runs cross the plate for the four the third inning. Diving back is Jay. David Freeze at the plate now. Yeah, tough air for Marlon Bird. He was just throwing the ball back into the cutoff, man, and Freeze happened to get uh, in the line of the throw and deflected it into foul territory, allowing Jay to score. Freeze knocking in two runs with his opposite field single down the right field line, taking a strike, and it's 0 and 1. He's 1 for 2. And once you have the kind of year he had in postseason, 2011 World Series MVP, you are a hero forever in this city, especially if you come from this city. The star at Lafayette High School in school and a terrific person shot up the middle and it's a base hit to center field for freeze second hit of the game for freeze and John Jay stops at second so the Cardinals not content with a seven run lead midway through this game have two on and nobody out here in the fifth with Dusk also coming up.
Well, we showed you the numbers at the top of this show. Uh, the regular season series between these two teams, and Mike Matheny and his ball club is well aware of the Pirates' ability to get themselves back into a ball game. They're going to try to tack on any way they can. Our total motion swing kind of smothered that ball, hit the top half of the baseball, but fortunately for David Freeze, found that hole up the middle of the field. And becomes the first Cardinal with more than one hit in the game. Here is Descalso. Who bounced into a double play and grounded to short. And a shot handled nicely by Walker over to second for one. And the ball is thrown away at first. And the run is going to score. Jay will come around and score. As Barmas is throw and under Morno. And it is now eight to one. Boy, that is absolutely a tailor-made double play ball. The first thing that has to happen is the ball has to be hit hard at one of your defenders, and it was right to Neil Walker. Good relay on to Barmas, but Barmas is throw to first base. Comes across a little bit sidearm, gets some tailing action on that throw, and Morneau not able to dig it out over there at first base. So a run comes in, and you can never assume a double play. And here is Wainwright with a good bunt off the mound. Is Gomez and he makes the play at first sacrifice and runners now at second and third or two out I should say and freeze remains at second base as Carpenter comes up with two out. Also on its second with two out, one run in, and answering that uh, Alvarez home run are the Cardinals here in the fifth inning to lead eight to one, and it's 0 and 1 to Carpenter, who is one for three. Came up twice in the third inning, singled, and then popped up. One and one. If you're a Cardinal fan in this crowd and watching and in this city, you always come into a series like this holding your breath, you're hoping. You know that nothing funny is going to happen to your home team in game number one. And this is an ideal situation to be in where you could just exhale, sit back, and enjoy the game to this point. Well, they can start worrying about tomorrow's game. <laughs> Already? <laughs> yes, I guess so. Two and one. As he fouls off the fastball, the count to Matt Carpenter, two and two. I think a lot of the concern on the part of Cardinal fans and the Cardinals team for that matter was Adam Wainwright early in the ball game. We talked about how he struggles in the first inning had an ERA of almost eight and a half in first innings this year. But got through that unscathed and uh, other than the solo homer by Alvarez has just cruised through. Three and two to Carpenter. Descalso. Who reached on a fielder's choice and was sacrificed. Lead off walk to John Jay. Coming back again to haunt the Pirates. 3 2 pitch, a drive hit to left field. And going back and making the catch is Marte. Good speed out there, and that'll do it. But the Cardinals get another run, and after five, lead it eight to one.
part to his killer curveball, and it has been effective again today with a split in terms of miles per hour of nearing 20 miles per hour between his fastball and his curve. Wainwright has struck out six, five of them by the curveball so far. All right, Matt, thank you very much. And Adam Wainwright in command here, leading 8-1, to one, given up three hits, has struck out five, and facing Starling Marte with the count one and one. Aves at it. Marte off the curveball has struck out swinging and looking so far today against Wainwright. Two singles and a leadoff home run by Pedro Alvarez last inning. The only hits off of Wainwright and the one two pitch and the count is even two and two. Marte third in the league with stolen bases has on and his team well down that's not a factor in this game and a ball glove beautifully by Adams feeding Wainwright for the out well may not be Alan Craig but he looked pretty good there and he makes a good stab on that one to retire Marte did a nice Alan Craig impersonation right there. That ball was not an easy play. A lot of top spin and some side spin off the bat of a right handed hitter. Right down that first baseline. He tracks it down. Nice shovel feed on to Adam Wainwright to get the speedy Marte at first. Big guy had a good first step there. One out to Neil Walker, who has bounced out twice. Pirates have not hit any fly ball outs in the game. Closest thing to anything in the air was Barmas with his line drive that was handled by Freeze in the third. One and oh to Neil Walker. Seven of his 16 home runs. In some. In and the pitch inside, two balls, no strikes. Adam Wainwright trying to give the Cardinals a one nothing lead in this best of five, and he would be earmarked in case there is a game five, a deciding game here in St. Louis. Adam Wainwright would get the nod. Get the nod. No curve in there for the call strike. And with a seemingly comfortable seven run lead you wonder if Mike Matheny might not pull the plug on Adam Wainwright to save him some pitches for his next start. To mention the fact you could get some of those youngsters in the bullpen involved here at Bush Stadium much more uh, conducive environment for a young pitcher making his first postseason appearance. Thrown 86 pitches thus far. Pitch count has never been a never been a Factor in Adam Wainwright, who's gone into the 120s so many times, but falls behind here to Walker, three and one with Andrew McCutcheon on deck. Fouled at the plate, and a full count now. You mentioned all the ground ball outs with Adam Wainwright on the mound really shouldn't be a surprise. We've kind of touched on it throughout the telecast. The Pirates and Cardinals rank one and two in ground ball percentage this season. But Wainwright uh, carrying it to an extreme here today. It's a fair ball. And Adams flipping to. Wainwright. And there are two down. Well, MLB Fan Cave is coming back in 2014. Players, celebrities, concerts, and more. And you could be a part of next season's team. Go to MLBFanCave.com and apply now. Boy, how popular is that excursion bit for fans and players throughout the big leagues? Well, players look forward to making a trip to the cave. Two down to Andrew McCutcheon. Lashed a single up the middle his last time up. So he's one for two today.
How comfortable, how comfortable to be confused for Larry Fitzgerald anymore. <laughs> That's a big step. Descalso. And again, three ground balls, three outs, one, two, three inning in the sixth. Eight to one. Takes a strike. Beltron, who delivered the big blow back in the third inning with a three run homer. Gomez doing a nice job jumping ahead in the count. Eight of 12 first pitch strikes. He's giving Clint Hurdle exactly what he needed out of his bullpen today in relief of A.J. Burnett, who imploded after two innings. Everything got away in that third, and Gomez just trying to eat up some innings, give the rest of that bullpen a day off, and hopefully hold the Cardinals right where they're at. 1-1 one, one, call strike to Beltron. 1-2 and two now. So Beltron 1 for 3. The hitter who comes alive in postseason and did so in a big way back in the third inning. Grounds this to Neil Walker. And there's one gone here in the sixth. One out in the sixth inning and Matt Holiday coming up against Gomez. As we mentioned, Gomez has been a, a starter and a reliever this year for the Pirates. He had eight starts this year and his longest start was seven innings and his longest stint in relief four and a third. He came in with nobody out in the third inning. So if he retires the side it would be four innings of work for him. Holiday been on base twice with a walk and a double goes after the first pitch skies it to McCutcheon and there are two away. NBA basketball returns with an opening night doubleheader on TNT. 
Derrick Rose makes his return to the court where the Miami Heat hosts the Chicago Bulls, followed by the Battle of L.A. as the Lakers play the Clippers. That's Tuesday, October 29th, only on TNT. Two out, and Matt Adams, he too has been aboard twice, hit by a pitch and singled, and came around and scored one of those seven runs in the third. 1-0. To Adams. And you wonder about who Matt Adams rooted for when he was a kid. He's from Phillipsburg, not quite western Pennsylvania, but central Pennsylvania. And he went to Slippery Rock University, which is just 50 miles north of PNC Park. And he's the first big leaguer from Slippery Rock. And he's ahead on the count, 3 0. Oh. Led all pinch hitters in baseball with 11 pinch hits this year. Now the Cardinals, of course, need him as a regular at first base with Alan Craig out, and he walks on four pitches with two out here in the sixth. That is the second walk issued by Gomez, and it will bring Yadier Molina up. Lamar Adams, rather, not just a slugger. I mean, it. It would be easy to look at his body type and his swing and say, yeah, big home run hitter probably strikes out a bunch, doesn't make much contact. But in five different stops in his minor league career, he averaged 318, had a high of 32 homers in Springfield when he also drove in 101. So this is a guy that uh, not only is a power hitter, he's just a good hitter. So is Yadier Molina as he hits one into right center field, and it's off the glove of McCutcheon, and they're going to wave in Adams. Adams will turn his way around third and come in and score, and it's 9-1. to one. Talk about giving him a breather. I think Adams needs one here as Molina gets his second hit of the game. And we'll see how they rule this. Inside out swing by Yadier Molina producing that Hard hit ball toward the gap and McCutcheon just kind of overruns it hits off the heel of his glove and Matt Adams motoring all the way around from first base waved home by Jose Akendo the third base coach and somebody get the oxygen <laughs> Mike Aldretti the bench coach to the left of Mike Matheny and I have to say that he has to come in on the era because Adams would not have been waved home at all had that ball not been bobbled by McCutcheon in center field you wouldn't think. And I think with uh, you know at the time a seven run lead in the ball game Jose Akendo probably throws up the stop sign on Adams had the ball not gotten by McCutcheon. I think they'll rule it a double for Molina. And an error charge to McCutcheon to allow the run to score. So John Jay 0 and 1 to him. Good day at the plate for Jay as he takes. Strike two. He has singled and walked twice. Scored a run and uh, one of those walks came with the bases loaded and actually came around to score two runs for the Cardinals who are up nine to one. No run batted in for Molina on that double. And the count one and two to John Jay. I mean, it was going to be a tall task for the Pirates either way, trailing seven to one, but an error by Clint Barmas in that fifth inning allowed a run to score, and now an error by Andrew McCutcheon in center field allows another run to score. You just cannot afford to give the Cardinals those tack on runs. And striking out. Nope. Jay stays alive. Got a piece of that one, so it's still one and two is Molina, who has a single, double, and a walk today. Rounded to Walker. And that'll do it. But Cardinals get another run on an error and uh, take a 9 to 1 lead as the Pirates come up in the seventh.
And today's game summary is brought to you by Geico. In a 9-1 to one Cardinal lead, A.J. Burnett does not get anyone out in the third inning. Adam Wainwright sailing along. Beltron, the big hit, 50th career postseason home run, a three-run drive. Alvarez with a solo home run for the Pirates, who committed three errors. And David Fries has a couple of hits as well. And uh, all in all, nine hits for the Cardinals. Yadier Molina also with two hits. Justin Morneau leading off the seventh for the Pirates against Wainwright takes a strike. Morneau singled his last time was one for two. Six walks combined between Burnett and Gomez. Five of those walks have come around to score for the Cardinals. Foul ball and it's two strikes. Morneau was the American League MVP back in 2006. Last time he reached postseason. Four years with at least 100 runs batted in. But it's been four years since he's managed that. But he's been a plus for the Pirates. Slow curve and going around is Morno for strike three. And that is the seventh strikeout for Wainwright. One gone in the seventh. Right now, let's go to Atlanta and Keith Oberman for this Bank of America game break. All right, Keith, thank you very much. Marlon Bird swings and misses for a strike. So a big series opening up. Coming up between the Braves and the Dodgers. Yeah, no question about it. The Braves uh, who looked like they were going to have the best record in the National League until stumbling down the finish a little bit. But, boy, some great pitching matchups. Clayton Kershaw, the odds-on favorite to win the National League Cy Young Award. Uh, I'll tell you, if it's all about pitching in the postseason, the Dodgers have to like their chances with Kershaw at the top and Granke and whether it's Ryu or Nolasco in the third spot in the rotation. And Puig, I tell you, he is a must-see. You can't turn away when he's uh, doing something. He might hit a ball 500 feet. He might throw it 500 feet over his cutoff, man. You never know. <laughs> but he's a show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's electrified the fans around baseball, especially in Los Angeles. A perfect place for him to perform. And, of course, he'll be there as the Dodgers face the Braves in Atlanta. One ball, two strikes to Bird, and time is called. I'm not sure Yadio Marlina was uh, looking out toward the left center field. I'm not sure what he spotted out there, but uh, whatever it is, it's enough to cause home plate umpire Tony Randazzo to delay the game momentarily. I guess now we're good to go. Not sure what that was all about. That's in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes to Bird, who has struck out twice. So Wainwright with eight strikeouts tonight, giving up just three hits, two singles in the fourth inning after two are out, and then the leadoff homeward to Alvarez in the fifth. Just a little blip for Wainwright is all it's been thus far. Ground ball, and wide of first base is Adams as he races Bird and beats him to the bag for out number two. Little deceptive speed and look at the dugout, the Cardinal <laughs> dugout. <laughs> Trying to imitate Adams in his uh, scamper to first, and he's smiling out there. <laughs> uh, I think he scampered to first the way he did because Wainwright was a little bit slow getting off the mound that time. He was caught spectating, and Adams realized the only play we're going to have is if I take it myself, and he wins the foot race. Now watch Wainwright. Sees the ground ball to the right side. Slow getting off the mound. I don't think he would have beaten Martin. Marlon Bird rather so a uh, nice play by Adams that time and the Cardinals bench having a little fun with Adams in the process nice to have that eight run lead two down and here is Alvarez who's accounted for the only run for the Pirates the home run <laughs> Chris Carpenter that's a smile he's smiling believe me inside 
2 and 0 to Alvarez. First postseason home run in the fifth. Here's a strike. So Wayne right now has thrown 101 pitches. Two and one to Alvarez with two out here in the seventh. Cardinals nine runs nine hits no errors the Pirates one run three hits and three errors. Way out in front. In the dirt. Three and two. Wayne Wright trying to remain undefeated in postseason play. Trying to go to win his second game against the Pirates. This one in postseason. Here's the payoff pitch. Just getting a piece of it at the plate is Alvarez. Yeah, that one got a piece of Yadier Molina behind the plate as well. They go with the big curveball in the two strike count. Looked like it caught him somewhere on the inside of the right leg, but Molina quickly got to his feet, got a new ball from Tony Randazzo, and said, Let's go. Play ball. Strikeout number nine. He gets two this inning, a one, two, three inning, and it's nine to one. You are watching 2013 National League Division Series coverage on TBS, presented by T Mobile.
Friday telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Back here in Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Dick Stockton, Bob Brendley, and Matt Weiner. David Freeze looks at strike one. He's had a pair of hits, two runs batted in in the seventh position today. And the count one and one. Yadier Molina has two hits as well. One home run, and that off the bat of Carlos Beltran, the three run homer in the third inning. And right now, that's been everything the Cardinals have needed. And line foul one and two. And the new pitcher is Vin Mazzaro. 27 year old from Rutherford New Jersey has not pitched since Saturday September 28th. And was tied for the big league lead with eight wins in relief this season. Check swing and a foul. Under ideal circumstances, Mazzaro is a guy that Clint Hurdle likes to use with runners on base. He's come in and inherited 32 runners this season, has stranded 28 of them. And it's two balls, two strikes to freeze. So, Jenmar Gomez, uh, an innings eater for Clint Hurdle in this game, worked four innings, allowed. Three hits and two runs. None were earned and walked a pair. Carlos Martinez working in the Cardinal bullpen. And Adam Wainwright is scheduled to hit third this inning. Mentioned the fact that uh, has a big lead now and looking to. Pencil in Wainwright for a possible fifth game as Freeze takes a called third strike and he's down if there is a fifth game. Well, it's time for our Avocado All Stars moment. Carlos Beltran with a three run homer and a big one in the third inning. After Adam Wainwright had walked and Carpenter had singled off of A.J. Burnett. Seven runs and 11 batters to the plate for the Cardinals in that inning. And that has been the story of this one. As Daniel Descalso takes ball one, he has bounced into a double play, grounded out, and was safe on a fielder's choice. Colton Wong is in the on-deck circle and will pinch hit for Wainwright. So we'll see Martinez in the eighth inning. Two and one to Descalso. And it's three and one. Mazzaro, by the way, was acquired last November in a trade after a couple of years with the Royals. And pri prior to that, spent two years with the A's. A's in the Tigers in the American League Division Series. Getting underway tomorrow. There's a drive hit deep to right center field, but McCutcheon is there and he makes the catch for the second out. And now Colton Wong will come up as a pinch hitter for Adam Wainwright. Adam Wainwright sailing through this game. Not as easy as the America's Cup victory was, that's for sure, for the USA. But sailed through. And Colton Wong coming up as a pinch hitter. Hit 153 in 32 games and one for 15 as a pinch hitter this year. Two down. Chops it to Walker. And that'll do it. One, two, three inning. And so the Cardinals take a 9 1 lead into the eighth inning at Bush Stadium.
You are watching 2013 National League Division Series coverage on TBS presented by T-Mobile. Changes in the field for the Cardinals. Daniel Descalso moving to third base. Pete Cosmas now at shortstop. And Carlos Martinez is the new pitcher replacing Adam Wainwright. There is Descalso. And Cosma now at shortstop. As Freeze goes out of the game. And Carlos Martinez on here in the eighth inning. And a fastball for a strike, one and one. Another one of those big young arms for the Cardinals. Martinez just turned 22 a couple of weeks ago. Throws in the mid to upper 90s with some tailing action. Russell Martin leading off, reaches out and hits a bounding ball, and Martinez off balance. Gets oh, a what a play! What a play! Falling over. On the foul line was Carlos Martinez and Yadier Molina gives him a pat on the back and a big smile. What a play here by the pitcher. I was all ready to say that's a rookie mistake right there. You should just eat this ball. But look at this play. Fading into foul territory. Couldn't get much on the throw but slings it across there to Adams just in time to get Russell Martin at first base. What a great play. Falling away and getting Russell Martin. That's twice that Russell Martin today has not been able to beat out uh, infield hits. So there's one away, and Jose Tabata is batting for Barmas here with one out in the eighth inning. Chops this one to Descalso, and quickly two away. Sometimes young players feel like they can make every play. We were just talking about Yasiel Puig a moment ago, and Carlos Martinez refuses to quit on that play. <laughs> Did I see right? <laughs> Did I see right? Wow, what a great play. So Jordy Mercer now is going to be hitting for Mazzaro. Mercer who had been the regular shortstop until Barmas took over for him. And takes a call strike. Brian Norris warming up. In the Pirate bullpen. Now for Carlos Martinez as you can imagine when you have a fastball in the upper 90s you're going to use it a lot he has a lot of movement on that pitch throws it about eight times out of ten he'll mix in an occasional flat slider the change up uh, really isn't part of his arsenal we list it there but I can't remember the last time he threw one and strike three so Mercer strikes out Carlos Martinez makes his mark as a fielder we go to the bottom of the eighth nine to one Cardinals.
The game is just the start of the story. Unguarded with Rachel Nichols premieres Friday night, October 25th at 1030 Eastern and Pacific on CNN. Jordy Mercer going into shortstop, replacing Barmas. And the new pitcher is Brian Morris, the fourth pitcher of the game for the Pirates. Carpenter up the middle and Mercer getting a chance right away throws out Carpenter for the first out. What a funny little interchange here. We're going to show you that great play by Carlos Martinez one more time fading away strong underhanded throw on to Matt Adams at first in time to get Russell Martin as the teams came off the field. Obviously gets high fives Yeah, a nice defensive play but watch Yadier Molina. Mike Matheny says, "What? Well, did you tell him to throw that ball, or did you tell him <laughs> to hold on to it? You know, what? What's the deal? I'm sure Yachty probably said, just eat it. Don't risk a bad throw there, and possibly open the door for the Pirates. But these kids nowadays, <laughs> it's showtime. Carlos Beltran, three-run homer in the third. He struck the big blow for the Cardinals. They scored seven in the third inning. Each team got a run in the fifth, and the Cardinals added a run in the sixth." Three errors committed by the Pirates today. And seven of the nine runs are earned. Two are unearned. And the pop up, Russell Martin has a play. And he makes the catch, and Beltron's retired for the second half. Well, coming up next, it's game one of the other NLDS as the Dodgers face the Braves. Ernie Johnson, Hall of Famer Cal Ripken, and Ron Darling will have the call. That's game one, Dodgers and Braves next on TBS. You mentioned Clayton Kershaw, 16 and 9, and a 1.83 earn run average. Chris Medlin, who won 15 games, gets the call for the Braves. There's Matt Holliday. And Trevor Rosenthal working in the Cardinal bullpen. You think he'll be throwing heat? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, obviously, a nine to one ball game, not what uh, either manager expected going into game one of this division series, but uh, you kind of had the feeling, like most postseason series, the bullpens were going to play a big, big part in this series. The Pirates are very happy with the guys they have in their pen, and the Cardinals just bring one flamethrower after another in out of that Redbirds bullpen. Matt Holiday with his second hit, single to center with two out in the eighth inning. So one two for four for Matt Holiday today and the bullpens will end up being the decider not in this game which turned out to be a blowout for the Cardinals getting those seven runs in the third inning when 11 men came to the plate for St. Louis Matt Adams has singled, walked and was hit by a pitch a score twice. Brian Morris ended the season with five straight scoreless appearances for Pittsburgh and the first pitch ball won to Adams. Lance Lynn who finished with four consecutive quality starts and a 1.09 earn run average will get the call for the Cardinals. He was 15 and 10 this year in tomorrow's game two which starts at one o'clock on MLB Network and Garrett Cole will be making his first appearance against the Cardinals. We'll next pick it up Sunday for game three at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Where Francisco Liriano will be pitching for the Pirates and Mike Matheny hasn't officially named his starter but uh, leaning I would think to Joe Kelly. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Mike Matheny, uh, you know, mentioned to us before the ball game. I, I'm not going to tell you because I don't have to. <laughs> you know, a lot can happen between now and then. Sometimes you're forced to use guys in roles that you didn't anticipate going into a series. But uh, if all goes according to plan, it looks like it'll be Kelly. Two and two now to Adams. Pirates with high hopes of trying to get a game here and now I'll have to rely on trying to win tomorrow's to get the split going back home to Pittsburgh and that great sea of black the crowd there at PNC Park. 
But A.J. Burnett faltered in the third inning. Could not get out of the third. Walked Adam Wainwright to lead off the third inning, and that was the beginning of the doom inning for him. Well, you know the Pirates are anxious to get back to their home ballpark. Uh, obviously, they'd like to go back one and one rather than down 0-2. But uh, with some of the comments you hear from the coaching staff, Nick Lava, the third base coach for the Pirates. Uh, now keep in mind he was on the field when Joe Carter hit the game winning home run in game seven of the World Series for the Toronto Blue Jays. He said it's the loudest venue he's ever been at at PNC Park when the crowd is up and screaming the way they were the other night in that game against the Reds. And Adam strikes out and I think he was the coach when Jack Clark hit the big home yeah, run. Yeah. Here in St. Louis we go to the ninth inning nine to one Cardinals. Two thousand thirteen National League Division Series coverage on TBS presented by T Mobile. Pirates trailing by eight runs coming up in the ninth inning against Trevor Rosenthal, who became the Cardinals closer down the stretch when Edward Mejica struggled. And you see what his uh, arsenal is with that first pitch strike to Marte. I mean, he's got a curveball, a slider, and a changeup, but uh, there's usually not much reason to throw them. Average velocity on his fastball last season was 97.4 miles per hour. This year, it's dropped all the way down to 97.3 miles per hour. Marte has struck out twice and uh, was out on a superb play by the first baseman Adams, Matt Adams. To toss to Wainwright for the out. So Marte, Walker, and McCutcheon. Three hits tonight for the Pirates. Singles by McCutcheon, and Mordo, and the home run by Alvarez. That's been it. I really think the key to the whole game, at least as far as Adam Wainwright was concerned, was his ability to throw the curveball for strikes when he wanted to and bounce it in the dirt when he wanted to. We talked about how the Pirates are a dead fastball hitting team and 
Adam Wainwright showed very early on that he could command his off speed pitches and that really put the Pirates on the defensive on offense. Wainwright retired the first 11 men he faced so they didn't get him early as that they had the design to do. He struck out nine. And didn't walk anyone. But now it's Rosenthal who had three saves all scoreless efforts since September the 23rd. Prior to that was the setup man. Had 108 strikeouts the most by a Cardinal reliever since Mark Littell back in 1978. Here's the one two pitch. And it's in the air to right center field. John Jay. Makes the catch one out in the night. Right now, let's go to Atlanta and Keith Olbermann for this Bank of America game break. Keith, you can call it anything you want. Call strike to Neil Walker, 0 and 1, with one out. Walker 0 for 3. You know, normally I would think Mike Matheny would want to hold his closer back, but we mentioned at the top of the show these two teams have seen each other 19 times this year. Rosenthal hasn't come up with anything new since the last time the Pirates saw him, so no hesitation whatsoever for Mike Matheny to get Rosenthal some action here today. Two strikes to Walker. In the game, the Pirates would just like to uh, put on the shelf and forget about and go to work for game number two. And ever the motivator, Clint Hurdle, knows the things to say and uh, probably already, as he pointed out to you, some of the things that his thoughts were, they already heard. Mm hmm. Ball and two strikes now to Walker. Took something off that pitch in the strikeout. Two down. MLB Network is your home for two division series games. Tomorrow, see. The Pirates try to get even against these Cardinals. Game will be on MLB Network beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern. Noon Central Time exclusively on the MLB Network. Two out to Andrew McCutcheon. And a line drive base hit for McCutcheon to right field. So McCutcheon two hits on what is now the night. And has two of the four pirate hits. And that will send Morno to the plate with two out and a runner at first base. But Cardinal pitchers have struck out 11 pirate hitters tonight. How about that Trevor Rosenthal changeup at 89 miles an hour? <laughs> changeup from 100. Oh, yeah. Crowd on its feet. They've enjoyed this game here in St. Louis, and now they just want to let it all out and smile and say, We got one under our belts. One ball and one strike to Morno, who is one for three. And the Pirates down to their last strike. It throws in time, and the game is over. And the Pirates, with seven runs in the third inning, defeat 
Oh, the Cardinals beat the Pirates 9 to 1. Beltron with a big three run homer in the third, and the Cardinals take a 1 0 lead in this best of five National League Division Series as Adam Wainwright goes seven innings, strikes out nine, doesn't walk anyone, giving up one run, the home run to Alvarez, and A.J. Burnett, who was knocked out in the third inning, will take the loss, and the Cardinals win game one. But the big blow of the game in the seven-run third inning was the three-run homer by Carlos Beltran, and we chronicled his outstanding hitting in postseason, and now with 15 postseason home runs, tying the great Babe Ruth. Wheels really came off for A.J. Burnett in that third inning, starting with a grinding leadoff walk to the pitcher. There's the three-run homer by Beltron, way out of here to right field. And then the inning just kept going. One Cardinal after another, working deep at bats, getting into good hitters count. David Freeze with a ball right down the right field line to clear the bases. Ultimately, the throw back in hits Freeze, goes into foul territory, and John Jay comes home and scores. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong in that third for the Pirates. All right, right now let's send it down to Matt Weiner, who's with Carlos Beltran. All right, Dick, thank you very much. A seven-run third punctuated by Carlos Beltran's latest postseason home run, a three-run shot. Tell, take me through the at-bat, first of all, and the swing, which was a no-doubter. Well, you know what, Bernard is a guy that, you know, today uh, he was trying to come in on me, and uh, he made fun, some good pitches in my first at-bat, and in the second at-bat, actually, I was looking for a pitch inside, and I got it, you know, and, you know, as soon as I hit it, I know was, the ball was going to be gone, and, you know, it was going to give us a three-run right there, so it was a great feeling every time you capable to contribute. You guys went after Burnett uh, with patience, primarily. You know the, the stuff is always there. The command is not. You worked him for four walks in addition to all the hits. What was the approach coming in? Well, you know, the approach against Burnett, you know, he's a... Uh he has pitched tough games against us, there's no doubt about that. But uh, like I said, today, you know, he was able to fall behind the count and we were able to take advantage. Basically, you know, that's what happened today. You know, I mean, uh, he's a guy that sometimes you got to be aggressive, but sometimes, you know, when that slider is not, in, it's not getting there for a strike, you know, you got to be patient and, and try to put yourself in hit his count. And you guys got an ace kind of outing from your ace, Adam Wainwright. How important was it to start the series on that note? Well, you know what? It's, it's, it's great. I mean, being able to see Wainwright all season long, being able to do what he did today, uh, ch uh, chugging uh, teams down. And uh, actually, you know, today uh, wasn't any different. He was out there. You know, he was able to throw that curveball for a strike any time, any count. So, and at the same time, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a big uh, Big advance when you have Jaddy Molina behind the play. Also, that you know that guy does a great job behind the play. 15 postseason home runs that ties Babe Ruth. Well, you know what? I got to give the glory of the honor to God. Honestly, I mean, uh, I don't think about it. I mean, I, I've been fortunate to to play in, a, in four in my career four times in the postseason. So being able to come through like that, I really enjoy it. And uh, at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy with the opportunity. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. I'll send it back up to Dick. All right, Matt, thank you very much. So our final score once again, the Cardinals 9, the Pirates 1. For Bob Brenly, Matt Weiner, and the rest of the crew, I'm Dick Stockton, saying so long from St. Louis. And following a quick break, we'll send you to Keith Olbermann in our Atlanta studio. TBS is your home for the Wild Card Division Series and the exclusive home of the National League Championship Series.